Hey Divi Nation, welcome to another Divi use case live stream where each week we show you how to enhance your website with new and exciting designs and functionality. And today I'm going to be showing you how you can create three unique image gallery designs using Divi's new column layouts. Uh, I think you'll be surprised at how easy these layouts are to design and hopefully they will give you some new ideas to explore. So don't forget to check out the uh, blog, uh, excuse me, video description for the blog post. There's a link to the blog post that goes along with this use case. Also, if you want to check out more about the Divi theme, there's a link to our product page as well. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump in and get started. All right. So first off, I want to welcome everyone and make sure that everybody can hear me. Okay. That the audio is coming in clear. Also, uh, take some time to introduce yourself in the chat and uh, hopefully we can get any questions you have answered there as we go along. All right, it looks like um, we have some comments already, which is exciting. Awesome. Hello, everyone. All right, we're loud and clear. Thanks, Zen. Sounds good. Thank you, Uncle Social. And the, the Michu, thank you, it's clear. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and just as a reminder, um, again, if you have any questions, we sh I should be able to get to them in the chat. If not, we should have somebody from our staff there maybe to help out and uh, just feel free to post any questions you have. I'm gonna go through three designs and hopefully we'll have time to tackle all three of those pretty quickly and maybe we can learn together some new and exciting ways to use these layouts so this is uh if you don't already know divi just released or we elegant themes just released a new column structure for divi and this includes things like six columns five columns um, and as you can see here this is uh, first design that we're actually going to be doing today, which is built on a one half one six one six one six layout. And just to kind of give you a preview of what's coming up, that's our first design there. And this one down here is using a six column layout with uh, some, you know, custom text overlays there as an additional uh, design feature. And then the uh, another uh, layout underneath just to kind of fill out the design a bit, just to give you some ideas. And then uh, scrolling all the way down here, you can see this is another design uh, using some uh, different sizes of images, box shadows, things like that to show depth, uh, to make the image in the middle seem closer than the images on the outside columns there. This is using a five column layout, which um, is really nice, works best with all when all the images are the same size. But uh, to do this, really, all you're going to need is the Divi theme. And also um, with that, you will have access to all of our pre-made layouts. And the one that we're going to be using is the Florist Gallery page layout, with the, which is included in the Florist layout pack. All right, so to get started, first thing we're going to do is create a new page. So I'll go to Pages, Add New. All right, let's give our page a title. Call it Gallery. And then I'm going to click to use the Visual Builder. And then of the three options, I'm just going to Click the one that says choose a pre-made layout. This will pop up the load from library modal here. I'm going to come down here to the florist layout pack. Then I'm going to find the gallery page. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, uh, this would obviously work with any image gallery. Um, I like this one because it's kind of a simple kind of basic framework for me to you know, build off of to kind of speed up the process of building out these design ideas. And also it actually uses images which aren't all the same size. And I know a lot of you out there um, have galleries like that. And, you know, so 
this is, a, I believe, going to be a good uh, gallery, excuse me, layout to work with. After we select the gallery page, click use this layout. It's going to be loaded to our page and then we can get started. <clears throat> excuse me. So um, I see a post by uh, Frederick. Um, I suppose we have to work out the size of the pictures before uploading. Guess you have a blog article talking about resizing the images. Actually, it's a good question. Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, I think best, pre best practice is always to go ahead and resize and you know optimize your images um, for the web beforehand. That way, it's kind of a hassle to do it after the fact. And so if you're wanting to have all your images look the same on your galleries, it's a good idea to go ahead and make them all the same, have all the same dimensions. And uh, there's also a post uh, on the on our blog uh, that's an ultimate guide to uh, using images with Divi you might want to look at. It might help you uh, figure out what's the best size to use. But with these new column structures, uh, I believe that blog post is going to have to be updated with some new best practices for image sizes for these new layouts. So, all right, let's get started. Um, this is uh, my header section up here. I'm going to leave it. I'm actually going to uh, kind of copy this text module a little later on, but uh, I'm just going to first, I'm going to duplicate this section because I want to kind of use this basic framework of these this gallery and these images mainly uh, with each new design. So I'm just going to uh, duplicate this section. Uh, actually, I can do it a couple of times. I'll probably use it. I think I'll use it all three times. So uh, once it's duplicated, you can see that it's duplicated down here. Um, I'm going to go in and jump in and go to my row set, uh, my hover over my row and in my menu here. I'm going to change my column structure and here are all the new column layouts that are available. And you can see uh, this one down here is the one half and then these are all these three columns are all one sixth um, uh, of the uh, page width. So it's one half, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. Yeah, I think my math is correct on that. <laughs> and then uh, I'm just going to select that and you can see it changes it and um, kind of leaves this far uh, column over here to the right open. And so what I'm going to do is just drag the images that are inside the one half column here, drag them over here to the right column. All right. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, the goal here is to use this three column structure here for the images to kind of, you know, give a kind of triangular layout here. So uh, I guess the first thing I can do is just copy over this text because I want to show you what it would look like with some text, maybe as a header or a section to feature some images in, the, in this little small gallery here to the right. So I'm just going to copy this row, excuse me, this text module. Um, you can also use right click. I'm using the short keys, um, copy the module and then paste it here. Simple enough. And then I'm going to delete the, uh, the two bottom images in my, what is the second column here? And then the last image in the third column. And so now you can see the, the structure, uh, kind of has a, a triangular uh, feel to it and which is going to look nice once I put the text there and kind of pull it over to kind of fill out the design. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, I could, uh, one, one thing I do like about this layout is because this triangular uh, gallery uh, layout or image gallery layout does get preserved on tablet uh, displays uh, just to kind of show you what I mean. Uh, when I go to tablet, you can see the three columns are preserved, which is nice. And then if you're wondering, it goes to one column on um, smartphone. So 
All right, so I have my elements in place here. Let's go ahead and update my row settings. I'm gonna hover over my row here. I'm gonna click on the settings icon. Then I'm gonna give it a custom width. Um, click uh, the design tab, go to sizing. And I'm gonna click use custom width. And I'm just gonna select the unit to be percentage. Now you can see that has done something to my layout. It now is an 80% width instead of the fixed uh, 1080 which pixels, which was by default. I'm not gonna change the percentage value. I just wanted it to be 80%. I like that. It's a nice width. So I'm gonna keep it at that. And then I'm gonna give a custom gutter width of two. That's going to bring the uh, everything, the columns closer together and which will kind of make the images more visible in the design once we start adding some more stuff to it. All right, let's give it a custom padding. Uh, right now, uh, I'm just gonna actually reset the padding that's there currently and give it a, a top padding of three VW, or viewport width, um, which is basically something like 3% of the total width of the browser and uh, do the same on the bottom there. So top and bottom, 3VW. And there it is, you can see the, let's create some spacing for me, which is nice. I'm gonna save this out and I'm gonna hover over my text module here. And I'm just simply going to give this also, let me go ahead and hug my modal there to the left so you can see. Um, I'm going to change my text heading text. That's what this is. Currently it's an H1. You might want to change that to an H2 if you're not using it as a main header, but um, I'm just going to change my heading text size to 11 VW. All right, so that made it uh, pretty big. And just a kind of a word of caution, if you're using the uh, modal here uh, when it's kind of hugging to the left here. Um, it's going to make your VW length units look a little um, inaccurate because if you remember, it's taking into effect the total width of your browser instead of this uh, width preview width that we're using in the builder. So to get a more accurate view, you, you'll want to pull that out so you can see um, what it's going to actually look like. So just kind of a warning there. Maybe I'll just leave it over here to the right so you can see the design. All right, so then I'm going to add a divider module. So I'm going to save this out underneath my text here. Just add a divider. I do want to show it, so I'm going to keep that there. Go to my design settings. I'm going to give it a nice light gray color. Just um, there you go. And then I'm going to style it with, uh, let's see, actually I just want to make the size bigger. So I'm going to give the divider weight a four pixel width. And I'm going to give it a height of two VW. Now I'm giving it also a VW um, length unit there, uh, the height, because I do want it to scale. It's like uh, when you use VW elements for large uh, text and things like that, that you want the design to stay in place and scale as you shrink, shrink the browser and desktop. Um, it's a good idea like for, you know, uh, paddings and, 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 and this is like a height of a, of a, of a divider. It's basically going to, you know, make sure that design scales and looks the same and all proportional to each other. Um, so a, let's go ahead and keep the width at a hundred percent. Uh, and here's where I'm just going to use some custom margins here under the spacing element to give it a um, pull it kind of away from this left side of the page and then pull it into the um, empty space over here uh, where these image galleries are. All right. Make sure my face is not hiding this box. So sorry about that. I think you can see. Let me pull it up a little bit. There you go. All right, so I'm going to add a uh, 5 VW left margin. 
you can see that it kind of pulled it away already. And then this, by giving it a negative right margin, I'm just gonna give it negative 10 VW. And this is going to kind of, it's not gonna move it um, any further from uh, the side of the page. It's just gonna make the divider longer. So basically what you're doing is you're increasing the width of the actual module, the divider module. So it's giving it more space. And then um, because it's set to 100%, it's gonna fill it out. So there you go, we just kind of pushed it over into the empty space there. And now I'm going to save this out and let's go ahead and create a new text module underneath here. It's gonna give me some mock text that I can work with um, and I'm going to actually, before I do anything, I'm gonna save that and then I'm going to copy my module styles from this top module, which has some you know, elements like the font and everything that I wanna use. So I'm just gonna paste it, um, excuse me, paste the module styles in there. And then I need to go in here and update the text a little bit more. So I know this is about galleries and I apologize for spending some time on this, but uh, hopefully it is a little helpful for you guys to see uh, some uh, kind of reasons why uh, I made some of the decisions in the settings as well. Uh, so the text size, I'm just gonna make a, um, a 1.8 VW. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a custom line height of 1.6. And I'm on a, a really large uh, monitor here, so it's, you know, it's going to look different as you shrink down. But you, you, will, uh, you may need to go in later on and give this um, text size a different, like a pixel value for your tablet and um, smartphone, just so it doesn't shrink too small because we it is kind of um, going to be really small browser widths when we get to the tablet and smartphone. All right, so let's just give it some custom margin to match my divider there. And I'm going to give it a custom margin of 7 VW on the left. It'll pull it, um, give it a little bit margin of my divider there and to the right going to do negative 9 VW and that's going to pull it even farther increase the size of the module there and and let it bleed over into my gallery there with that empty space kind of round out the design all right so we're pretty much done last thing is to just add this um, I'm going to open my settings for my section there I'm going to go and add a div uh, excuse me not a divider a background gradient and oops, click on my gradient there. And for my first color, I'm just gonna use a color that kind of matches uh, some of the colors used in the image itself. And um, I'm gonna paste that as my left um, gradient color. And then I'm gonna make this color on the right completely transparent. And then I'm just gonna change my gradient direction well, actually, first, I'm going to uh, put my start position at 33% so you can see how to get the angle right. So if you want to get the angle right, it's a good idea to set your starting and end position first. I'm going to set it to 33% and uh, give it a end position of 40. And so it's got a slight um, kind of fade there. So now I can go here, I'm gonna pull this over to the left side. I'm gonna work with my gradient direction. And as you can see, I can move it around to get kind of to match my flow of my angle on my triangular layout there. And I think about two, I think I have 231 degrees is just about right. All right, so that takes care of our first design. Um, and I just want to pause and make sure I'm not missing any questions that you may have. Um, let's see. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. 
Good. So it looks like we're all good. I don't see any pressing questions. Um, Uncle Social says, uh, really, I'd like to force more than one column on mobile, though. Um, it, just talking about the three column structure here, um, I believe just one picture in the column makes the page very, very long. Lots of swiping. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea, um, especially on phones. Maybe sometimes you'll want to have a two column layout for those images on phones. Uh, I'm sure there's a workaround for that, um, but maybe not so easy out of the box. So good, good suggestion. Um, <laughs> uh, and also he suggested uh, to do a video on the VW units. Um, I'm not sure if there's a video just specific to that, but there is a guide to using, um, you know, length units on the blog post as well. I forget the exact title uh, that I gave it, but it's, um, Maybe an ultimate guide to length units, using length, length units it might be helpful for those of you looking for more information on that. All right. Um, Gary Carter says, what's the difference between VW and percentage length unit? Uh, that's a great question. And I do want to go ahead and um, since it's coming up more, I'll just... If you go to the blog and just do a quick search on length units, you'll see this guide to understanding applying CSS length units in Divi. And this will kind of clear up some of those questions for you. Um, and I'll just, there you go. I'll just put a link in uh, YouTube there. Excuse me, that's Facebook. And let me see, put one in. Um, elegant theme, um, excuse me, in the YouTube channel as well. All right, so just to answer your question though, briefly, uh, percentage takes in the entire view of the container. So if I set this, let's say this row is only 80% of the entire page width. So anything I set in here, like if I put, um, let's say the padding here, if I, that right now the padding in this row at the top is three VW. If I set it to 3%, it's actually going to be 3% of the row container there um, instead of the entire width of the browser. And, and so as you can see, you have this section width here uh, that may be different from the width of this container, which may be different than the width of your module container. So if you use percentages within each of these modules, it's going to be based on the percentage width of the, uh, you know, like the module or the column, things like that, whatever its container is in. Hope that answers your question. Um, whereas 3VW is not dependent on any of the containers, it's directly related to the overall width of the browser at any given time. So it always will scale um, the same, if that makes sense. All right, very cool. I want to answer your questions. But we definitely want to continue so I have time to get to these other uh, layout, uh, gallery layout designs. Um, but uh, real quick, though, if you are just joining us, I do want to welcome you to this week's Divi Use Case live stream. And it, we are basically what I'm doing today is showing you how to use uh, or to create rather three image gallery layouts using the Divi's new column layouts. And uh, for more information, you can check out the link to the, uh, excuse me, the video description below for a link to the blog post that goes along with this uh, live stream. Also, if you need more information on Divi, check out our a link to our product page as well. All right, so let's get back to it, to our second design. And if you remember, I did go ahead and duplicate my section. So I have a, uh, another working uh, base here. And I have another one down there that I'll use for my third design. All right, so for this next design, um, just to kind of remind you where we're what we're going for is we're gonna do this um, six column layout with a nice box shadow and an overlapping text module there. 
So to do that, first I want to change my column structure here to a six column. There you go. And as you can see, now it pushed my, what was a three column structure, all those elements to the left. I have some empty columns here that I can uh, fill in. So let's just do that. I'm going to pull some of these images over here. Um, you can also just copy and paste them. All right. And then I'm just going to delete these because I don't need them. All right, simple enough. Now I'm going to add a white inner box shadow to my image. So we're going to come back and kind of adjust this, the, the section settings in a bit. But for now, let's just tackle this first image here. So the first image design, um, I'm going to add a box shadow. Now, this is just kind of a subtle effect, almost kind of like a cloudy, dreamlike effect. Um, but you can use any box shadow effect. You don't have to use it if you don't want, if you think it's not going to work. Um, just kind of thought it was cool, thought you would uh, might like to see a, a unique design there. Um, so let's go ahead and give it an um, inner box shadow. So it's this selection here. And just make sure that the box shadow position is set to inner shadow, which will if you make this selection. The only thing I'm going to change is the box shadow blur strength. I'm just going to make it eight pixels. And then change this to white. Now this works well for um, white backgrounds here because obviously if I set it to white, it's going to blend in around the edge there. And uh, so something... Oh, I forgot. I need to change my, um, I changed the wrong one. It's actually the blur strength can stay default. It's the spread strength, excuse me, spread strength. I need to change to eight pixels. There you go. That looks more like it. All right. So there's my box shadow. I'll save that out. Uh, one more thing. Forgot. Go back in there. Go to my um, border. I'm just going to add a 10 pixel uh, rounded corner to this one to kind of round it out a little bit and save that. All right, so now that I have my first image designed, I'm just going to, uh, I can right click copy module styles here. And then you can just kind of paste it into each one of these um, using a short key, which I'm using a PC right now. So it's control alt V to paste those module styles in there. All right. Those look good. Now it's time to add some images. So, excuse me, some letters under here. So basically I'm just going to add a text module underneath each one of these uh, with a single letter. It's kind of like an abstract design technique. We've used it before in other blog posts. Um, I thought it worked well with this to kind of give you a new look for displaying your images. So I'm just going to uh, add a new text module. Erase everything and put the letter I. I'm going to use a capital I. Um, and then I'm just going to go to my design settings. And let's go to my text options. And then I'm going to change my font to Alice. And make sure my text color is white. And then I'm going to give it a the text of VW width of 12. All right. Now, to bring up this text to, so that it overlaps, we're going to give it a custom margin. Um, uh, I do want to give it a, a bring my line height down to 1 EM. Basically, that's you know going to make sure that it's kind of the same. Um, height as the actual text and I don't want to give it any letter spacing. Let's go down here to the spacing and give it a custom margin, a top margin of the, the same basic value, basically the value of the text. So it's going to be in 
negative 12 VW. All right, so that, that's actually larger than what it's going to be because I need to get, I'm actually gonna um, change the row structure here to be not a fixed width, um, but I'll do that in a moment. And you'll definitely want to um, do the same for tablet, uh, adjust each of your uh, tablet and smartphone displays for your text because it will um, be different. Uh, in fact, um, the custom margin for tablets actually going to be around um, negative 20 VW. And for sake of time, I'm not going to go through those. You can look at the blog post for those values to make it responsive. Um, but you will need to make those adjustments. I'm going to save this out. And um, I'm actually going to jump ahead and change my column, my row, uh, to a, um, a custom width of 80 pixels, excuse me, 80%. And, oh, and so that's kind of the look I was going for with the text um, slightly overlaying the image. One thing I forgot to do, I'm going back, sorry, I want to go back to my text module and I want to make it right aligned. So make sure you do that. Uh, make the text orientation right. It's going to hug it over there to the right. All right, so now we got our first text module set. All I need to do is copy it and paste it under each one of these images. And then just go in and change the lettering. I just want to, as an example, I'm just going to spell the word indoor, like these are indoor plants or something like that. Obviously, you're limited to six letter words here, uh, but actually you can get creative. If you have more letters you want to spell out for some reason, you can just kind of let it continue on underneath this one and kind of frame itself a little bit. I'll make this an O. And make that an R. So there you go. That's our image gallery layout for the sixth column with a custom text overlay. All right, just a quick check on questions here before we continue this uh, layout design. All right, we're good. All right. So actually what I'm going to do is duplicate this column, excuse me, row. Uh, that's the previous one that I duplicated. That's the original, so don't get confused here. Um, this is my row that I just created. I'm going to duplicate that one. I'm going to erase or delete all of my text modules. And then I'm going to change the column structure. And let's go with this one. All right. And then I'm just going to change my row width back to its default. So change the sizing of my row back to its default. And that way it doesn't, you know, Actually, I have a, a image that's not the right size for this middle column here. So it's kind of looking a little blurry, but you want to definitely change that. Then I'm going to drag over some images to balance out the design here. Maybe um, copy and paste one over here. And there you go. So this kind of can act like a you know, a header or just an abstract design element. One thing you, you may want to note is that this, by default, your images will have the light box functionality. Um, so when you hover, when you overlay these text modules over the image, you will lose that functionality wherever the text is overlaying. So this probably will be good for only, you know, um, a, an abstract design, not a functioning 
gallery of images because it might the user um, might get confused and may not think it's clickable. So you can just simply take out the text if you want. All right, so let's go to our third design. I do want to make sure and um, make sure that I've tackled all the questions that may pop be popping up in the chat here. All right, looking good. All right, so, okay, yes, I'm going to sh show you. Um, I, Uncle Social asks if we can see this on tablet and mobile as well. Um, whenever you are using uh, VW length units, remember the preview, I'm just going to preview this on tablet, show you, is going to not be accurate. Because remember, these letters are actually going to be based on the width of the browser, not the width of this little preview box that's in the Divi Builder. So with that being said, uh, your best bet is to preview it on or maybe using uh, the inspect element in Google Chrome or something like that, or you can just simply resize your uh, page. And I'll just do that real quick. I'm just going to resize the actual page and, and I'm not using the one that I'm building because I haven't put the length units for mobile in yet, but this, this is a accurate representation of what it's going to look like when you're done. So when we get over to tablet, you'll see that the, uh, the text kind of overlaps and we have these big, large images underneath, uh, on the first view of tablet. And then of course it will shrink down to one on mobile. So there's kind of your preview of what it looks like on um, tablet. Good question. Uh, let's go on to our third design. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome to this week's Divi use case live stream. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create three unique image gallery designs using Divi's new column layouts. And for more information, check out the video description below for a link to the blog post that goes to this along with this use case. And if you don't have Divi yet, go ahead and check out the link to the product page to learn more about it. All right, let's jump in and get back to it. We're almost done. This is the last one. And this is a simple one, but I think it will, um, it kind of opens up some new doors for inspiration, I believe, with the symmetry, things like that. Uh, this is obviously using a five column layout. So to do that, we're going to come down to our duplicated section and <coughs> excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and make this a five column layout. And <clears throat> Let's go ahead and move these images. So actually it's best, this current design is best when the images are all the same dimensions, same size. It's just not gonna look right if they're not. So I'm just gonna copy this one here. Um, and then I'm gonna delete all these. Excuse me. All right, and I'm just gonna paste that image into each of my columns. And so now I have the, each of my five columns with an image that is the same width. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, actually I need some spacing here for my row. I'm just going to, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to copy the same spacing I used up here with my 3VW spacing. Um, copy spacing styles, come back down here, and then paste spacing styles. All right, now I got some room to work with. Uh, let's go ahead and tackle this first image design here. And what I'm going to do is change the width. 
Now, you could resize the images a number of ways, like for instance, I could just add some padding to my column there, and it will shrink the image if I wanted. Uh, but I'm just going to use the sizing option here, which is by default going to force it full width into whatever container it's in. And then I'm going to take that off and I'm going to give it a custom width of 50%. And this gets back to the question that I believe, I forgot who asked it about the percentage difference. Um, this is a good example of um, why putting this specific setting of 50%, this is actually going to be 50% of the column here that it's sitting in. So it's based on the container. All right, so I'm actually gonna make the module alignment to the right. It's gonna um, look nice once, uh, nice and even with my column spacing there. And then I'm going to um, add a border. Actually, I'm just going to add some rounded corners of 10 pixels. And then I'm going to add a box shadow. So just going to stick with the default there. Um, box shadow, the first option. And just kind of no real reason for me to change it up too much. But you can if you want. The idea being here that you want less of a blur strength. Um, or, or spread strength, rather, as you want the image to look closer and closer. So we're just going to keep that as the default, and we're going to, you know, add more blur and spread strength as we go along. All right. So since I want the same design uh, to be symmet symmetrical over here on this far um, column image, I'm going to copy the module styles paste it into this one and it's going to copy over the alignment as well. So I just need to go back in there, change my align or excuse me, my sizing under sizing my module alignment to left. All right. So let's do the second one here. Second one, I'm going to change the size to be 75%. And so this kind of is, you know, progressing by, uh, you know, 25%. That one's 50, 75, and then this one's going to stay 100. The module alignment, I'm going to set to center. Give it my 10 pixel rounded border. Add my box shadow. And for this second one, um, I'm going to change the blur strength to... Um, 36, there it is, around 36, there you go. So you can see it kind of looks like it's lifting off the page a little bit more. Save that out, copy the module styles, paste it over here to the corresponding one. All right, and now let's do our middle one. Keep our sizing at, at full width or 100, and then give it a border. Oops, that's too much. <laughs> Make it 10. Add my box shadow. And then I'm going to give the blur strength 63 pixels, or around that. Doesn't have to be exact, but. All right. All right, let's give it some spacing. I'm going to go to my row settings here and change the size to um, custom width percentage value a unit here. And then I'm going to give it a custom gutter width of two. All right, so as you can see, it's real symmetrical. Now all I really wanted to do, if you wanted, for instance, these add some padding to these two so that it, they kind of look, um, they're lining up. Uh, horizontally um, and vertically. Uh, you could do that. Um, but I'm actually going to duplicate this row and I'm going to bring these images down uh, so that it kind of looks like a mirror effect or, or create some symmetry there, balance out the design. 
I'm actually going to do that at the module level. So I'm just going to add padding to each of these modules. Um, actually, no, I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm going to do it at the column level. So I'm going to go into my row settings here and I'm going to make it hug to the left there. All right. And I'm going to go to my spacing under the design tab. And I'm going to change the column one. So here's my column one, column two, column three, column four, column five. So I, I need to put some top padding to column one. And I want to make sure it's the VW unit so that it scales nicely. I'm just going to add five VW. Uh-oh. I bet I did something wrong with my, oh yeah, that's what I did wrong. So brief pause, I'm going to save that out and we're going to come back to it. Um, I actually meant to make this actual full width, the sizing, not this custom width. Take that out, this is for the row, make it full width. All right, there you go. Now you can see that that's going to line up nicely. Go back to my row spacing here. All right, again, um, it's going to look like it's going farther down because, again, I'm hugging it to the left. If I take it off, you can see a more accurate description there. All right, so column two, I'm going to add, um, let's, let's do, actually, column one is going to have, man, sorry about this. It's going to have 10 VW. That's going to push it so it's equal to this one in the center. And then the next column is going to be 5 VW. And then let's look over to this one and we go back to um, middle column stays the same. Column four, we're going to give it a 5 VW. Column five, 10 VW. And save it out. Let's give the row here the same size, make it full width. And there you go. I hope that wasn't too confusing. Sorry about that. Uh, let's check out some questions. Um, uh, let's see, T, T Boy, I believe it's pronounced. I want to know if it's possible to view a single image in a created layout. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by view a single image. Um, All right, good question. Uh, if you can clarify t uh, that for us, T-Boy, if you want to, uh, I don't really understand the question. If you could clarify it for me, that would be helpful. Um, Uncle Social, why isn't there a vertical alignment option? <laughs> like top, middle, uh, bottom for modules in Divi. Um, I mean, that, that's a good idea. I'm a uh, I know, um, you know, you can do that a number of ways uh, using uh, flex and um, I think the old way is actually using uh, tables, uh, display table. You can do that that way. Uh, I'm not sure quite honestly why uh, if, if, if um, it becomes too difficult to do that uh, currently the way things are set up, but I'll definitely uh, keep that in mind. Hopefully we can get that solved because it is kind of a hassle sometimes to um, to get that working completely and perfectly vertical. Um, but good question. All right, let's check over at Facebook, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, let's see. We had the question of, uh, what is VW? Uh, Mariella. I believe is how you pronounce it. I hope that, uh, if, yeah, just look. Um, it actually means viewport width, but I think we answered that earlier. If you can look in the comments, maybe that's going to be helpful for you. Um, good question. Could I up my volume? All right. Yes, I can. Um, let's see. I turned it up a little bit. 
if you're having trouble hearing me, I apologize. Um, next time, let me know a little earlier so we can all benefit from it. Uh, T-Boy says, do you mean letting the user click on the single image? Uh, yes. Okay, so the question is, um, actually, I'm still, I, hopefully we can get someone to answer that a little later. I do want to be uh, sensitive to everyone's time here, but that's a good question. I think I understand it. Hopefully we can get to it a little later. Okay. All right, so if we, just a kind of overview of our designs here. There's our um, triangular gallery here in our five column with custom text overlay with a subsequent um, gallery underneath. And then this one here using the box shadow and you know custom padding to make it look all symmetrical. So I hope these designs are, were helpful for, for you. And basically, I hope it's, you know, serves as some inspiration um, for your own designs. And uh, all right. Oh, all right. So that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to our blog newsletter, our YouTube channel, and like us on Facebook so that you can get notified every time we have something new for you. And we will be back here next Tuesday with another Divi Use Case live stream. So be on the lookout for that. And if you want to share your own knowledge, skills, expertise uh, on the Elegant Themes blog, go ahead and check out a link in the video description for more information on how you can contribute your own unique content. Thanks again, and I will see you guys soon.